bus yesterday. Dressed like me, looked like me, it was weird. This kid was getting off the bus when I was getting on, so we were kind of like right in each other's way. It was awkward for a minute. So I just laughed and said, sorry, my bad. And this kid didn't say anything. This kid who looked like me, dressed like me, wouldn't even answer me. Just looked me in the eyes, real cold, real hard. Like I was a threat, like I was an enemy or something. I don't know how to explain it. Told you, it was weird. Weird enough to make me think. I couldn't get it out of my head all day long. This strange little interaction at the bus stop, early in the morning. I'm not a threat. I'm not anybody's enemy. Really, I'm not. I think I'm a pretty good person. I don't mean that in an arrogant way. I'm not the best student. I'm not the best athlete. I'm not anybody's role model, and I'm not trying to be. But I am trying. Honestly, I am. Trying my best. I always try my best. I help at home, I watch my little sister after school, I return my library books on time, I always eat my vegetables, well, almost always, except when my mother makes cauliflower. But you can't blame me for that. She smells up the whole house with that cauliflower. I hate cauliflower. What I'm trying to say is, why are some people so unfriendly? Why do people choose to live their lives like that? Like everyone they meet is an enemy. I don't understand because I'm not that kid's enemy. If we had met some other way, if we didn't have that strange little interaction at the bus stop, we might have even been friends.
I give myself the best advice. The only problem is I don't take it. So if I tell myself, you can't keep going to bed at 2. Tonight the lights go out at 12. That means I'm definitely going to bed at 2. Or if I tell myself, take a jacket. It'll probably get cold later. For sure, when it comes time to go out, I'll say, eh, who wants to carry a jacket around all day? I don't do it to teach myself a lesson or show myself who's boss or anything. It's just, I guess as good as I am at giving myself advice, I'm even better at ignoring it. I tell myself I need to work on that, but you know how that goes. because he's really an old dog. Oldest dog at the shelter, maybe even the oldest dog on the planet. He just walks really slowly, all hunched over, kind of like my grandpa does. But when you look into the old dog's eyes, he looks just like a puppy. Got the cutest little wiggly nose too, and those big brown eyes with a little twinkle and a little sparkle. Yeah, he looks just like a puppy when you look into those eyes. But like a lot of things in life, many of us miss it. We don't see it because we go too quickly and don't take the time. And to see something beautiful or something special really takes time. So I take the time. I take the time every day because he's my new dog, my new old dog with the big brown eyes. ones you find at the library, the little itty bitty ones. 
Yeah, those. I was at the library the other day researching a paper. I wasn't even using the internet, just going through the stacks, old school style, searching through the print books, writing things down. That's why I needed a pencil. I go up to the front desk, and what do I see? They have a little box of pencils. I look inside, and I see staring back a bunch of yellow pencils. But right on top, a green one. I've never seen a green pencil before. What the heck is it doing there? I didn't even know they make them in different colors. I've only ever seen yellow. One of a kind, for sure. It made me think, we're like that green pencil. Deep down, we know we're supposed to be unique. One of a kind. Individualists. But we don't always follow through, do we? Einstein said everyone's a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, that fish will go through its whole life believing it's stupid. I know this about you. You didn't show up here just to be the same yellow pencil in the same old box. This world doesn't need more yellow pencils. We have enough. We need more green pencils casting their marks and writing their scripts on this funny little planet of ours. Become a green pencil. Be that one green pencil in the box of yellows. Start today. Get your fire back. Write yourself an exciting life story with that unique, different colored pencil you've always known deep in your heart. You truly are. I'm so glad to be on the house. 
it's just gonna get messy again. Really, really stinks! You know, sometimes talking to you is the only thing that keeps me going. I know you'd really listen. Hey, lousy squirrel, come down here, come down here! Bumpers, no! Wait till I catch you, you gotta come out of that tree sometime. Bumpers, come. Now what were we talking about? Dumb squirrel, I wish I could climb trees. You're so lucky you're a dog, you can do whatever you want. But I can't climb trees, I can't even go outside and pee whenever I want to. I wish I was a dog. I wish I was a person. But at least I have you. But at least I have you. You know what? You're the only one who really understands me. I wish I could understand even one thing you say. I love you. I love you. Come on. between heads of state, and we could turn the place into an igloo. They'd be calling secret service for scarves and sweaters. And no one would be able to sign any treaties because their fingers would be frozen together. Or, get this, it's up. The president is having a huge party with a million people. We could pump the place up to 110 degrees. They'd be like, shh, all points bulletin. Shh, find the thermostat buildings. Then we'd bust out in a man something. What could we ask for? World peace? No more pollution? No. I've got it. Year-round professional football on demand. What? You don't think this will work? Covenant, 
stupid or both. So, like what do you mean? Do you have anything between your ears? Does this mean I don't get a tip? Oh, I'll give you a tip. Hire yourself a good lawyer. Well, you be hearing from Buffy. Oh, now look what you've done. Your friend will never, ever, ever turn out right. Well, I'm not like one to say I told you so, but well, I did. And you can never replant a really dead chia pet. Like Marge always said, dead chia pet hair really stinks. Tastes bad? 
<laughs> yeah, basically broccoli has nothing at all going for it. Except that my mom likes it and tries to make me eat it. Ugh. Did I mention that broccoli is disgusting? before I was five. I know we lived in many different camps, refugee camps, but I do remember the night that everything changed. We were sleeping, my sister and I. We hear footsteps coming closer to our tent. We'd heard footsteps before, but none of them ever stopped for us. Then a man with a clean face and shiny glasses handed us two airline tickets. He said, you're coming to the United States. And then he gave me a little American flag. I thought it was a toy, so I played with it. And my sister shined the embassy man's flashlight on it like a spotlight. It was so small, so beautiful. That one little flag held all my hopes. How could I say anything bad about this country? It still holds my dreams. Maybe not yours, but mine. Why do you 
let them make fun of you. I don't let them. Well, you don't stop them. You get used to it. Yeah, you look real used to it. No, you really are. You think they don't make fun of you? Not in my face. There's no difference. Yeah, there is. The things they say about you, do you know what they call Stop! Them? I don't want to know! That's the point! What point? Every time they one day say something in my face, but they're too afraid to, I win. Every time they even think something, but they can't say it, they're showing me respect. I win, and they win. 100 times a day. And you know how that feels? It feels the exact opposite of how you're feeling right now. I can't. I can't be you. Don't have to. Then they're just gonna keep. You don't have to because I like winning. Because every time I see they do you, I know that's what they do to me. But I'm not you. Doesn't matter. From now on, you'll be protected by me. And as soon as everyone knows it, they won't even touch you. But why? We're not friends. I told you. I like winning. And every day, when they want to come bother me and they can't, and then they want to come bother you and they can't, I'll win twice. Who even thinks like that? You're saying no. No. I'm saying thank you. That's not what this is about. I just don't. don't. Push it. I won't. I will. Thank you. up yesterday but I put it off. Just kidding. Seriously, do you know the secret to mastering procrastination? No? Don't worry, I'll tell you tomorrow. Joking. Honestly though, it isn't something to joke about. Procrastination is serious. I was actually bought a book on procrastination but I haven't gotten around to reading it yet. Okay, no more jokes. Here's the secret to mastering procrastination. Never say next time. No such thing as next time. Eliminate that phrase from your vocabulary this time. This last time's next time. So, next time you want to put something off. Remember what Horace Greeley once said? The best way to do anything is to begin. Great advice. To do anything, you have to actually get started. Got it? Good. Step one is to get into action. Step two is to break down the task into smaller steps. You know the old joke. How do you eat an elephant? one bite at a time. Step two is to break the job down into smaller incremental steps. Baby steps are okay. That's so it's not overwhelming for you. And step three is to repeat the process. Do it all over again. This way you get yourself into action, break down the job into smaller parts, and repeat until it becomes a habit. Wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. You can overcome this, I promise. That's how you beat procrastination. You get started, do a little at a time, and repeat until it becomes a habit. Get it? Got it? Good. No more procrastination. We're forming an assassination on procrastination. Gotcha. That's another joke. Last one. Now get out of here and go get started.
You couldn't pay me to have blue eyes. Or dimples. Yeah, have you seen the dimples? I'm looking at them right now. Huh, that egg. And the way he dresses. Like, everything always has to be so perfect. Yeah, like, even when he's messy, he still looks perfect. Really sad. So much to tell him. Yeah. I'm gonna tell him. Like, we are so on to him. Or maybe I will. What? I want to tell him that we're totally on to him. It's okay. I'll do it. No, I will. I was totally not into him before you were not into him. Nuh-uh. Uh-huh. Okay, odds or evens? Odds. One, two, three, go. I win. Hey, wait a second. Why is Megan talking to Devin? She would. Uh, I hate the way that all the girls here just keep feeding into his ego. Disgusting. Do you see what Justin's wearing tonight? Pathetic. Someone should tell him. Right? person, especially Monday mornings. I like to go out and have fun on the weekends. I'm not a real big party animal like some of my friends. Some of them never stop. It's go, go, go every weekend. Rain, snow, or shine. But me and mornings have never been on the best of terms. And Monday mornings are the toughest. It's like what my Uncle Adam says. The first five days after the weekend are always the hardest. He's not a morning person either, as you may have guessed. My dad's definitely a morning person. He gets up at 4 o'clock a.m. to hit the gym for an hour before he goes to work. Honestly, I wish I could be more like him. I turned out more like my mom. My mom says she likes to get up at the crack of noon. My mom's pretty funny, but she will sleep till noon if we let her. Mostly on the weekends, though. She can't get away with that during the week. But on Saturday and Sunday, she hibernates like a grizzly bear. My, mom call my dad calls her grizzly mom. He used to call her his sleepy little polar bear. She said she didn't like that much. She said it made her sound cold-hearted. But I'm not so sure that Grizzly Mom's any more endearing now. My mom and dad always seem to figure things out, though. They get along great. Better than any of my friends' parents do. Just go show you that you don't have to be with somebody with your mirror image. A little variety is nice. So, it's just like what my mom says. In any relationship where two people agree on everything, one of them is unnecessary. So maybe it's that opposites attract. Or maybe my mom and dad are just two awesome human beings. Two smart, good-natured people who don't let stupid little things get in between them. Like who's a morning person and who's not. So, we could tell jokes. 
I can never remember any. You tell them. I don't know any either. I was just trying to be funny. That's my usual part in life. My usual part in a play is a tree or a mate. Some really small part. I'm always a boy. I'm never a boy. I wish I had my phone. I wish I had a phone. I could at least call my boyfriend. You've got one of those too? Sure, we meet at the mall, go to parties. I don't spend my whole life being in plays, like some people. My mom doesn't let me have a boyfriend, but she does let me have boyfriends. Sometimes I'll ask her, so what's the difference between a boy and a boyfriend? And then she'll tell me stories all about her first dates. Your mom does that? Sure. But she's your mom. Moms don't do things like that. Well, mine does. That's amazing. We're really close. It's always been just the two of us. Your parents divorced? Mm-hmm. Since I was two. You happy, Mr. Stage Manager? We're getting to know each other. He's not listening. But you are. That's a surprise. So, any brothers or sisters? Nope. Lucky! My brother is eight. Get this, eight. And whenever he almost destroys the house or almost kills the dog or something, my mom would go, oh, he's just eight. He doesn't know any better. She would have killed me if I had done something that bad when I was eight. So, what are your parents like, Tiffany? They're great. I knew it. I mean, I guess they're great. I don't have a lot of time to spend with them. You have to make a choice if you want a social life, and I'd rather have friends, you know? Uh, sure. Sometimes my mom tries too hard to be my friend. To be like the understanding parent. The other day, I came in with a new outfit on, and I was like, so mom, what do you think? And she goes, well, it's a little tight, and not exactly your color, but if you want to wear it, it's your choice. What am I supposed to do when she says that? Thanks, Mom. I'll wear it for the rest of my life. <laughs> you are funny, Jesse. Thanks. Last week, I got invited to a party, but I haven't told my mom yet because I know she'd use it. If I don't pick up my room or do my homework, I'd be hearing, you won't be going to that party if you don't do what I say. So I won't tell her until two days before. Then I'll act really perfect until Friday night. I can handle that for 48 hours. My mom expects me to be perfect 24 hours a day for the rest of my life. What's the point? How can you have any fun if you're perfect? Ask Brittany. So Brittany, what are your parents like? I bet they come to all your shows. Bring you flowers, brag about you all the time. Sometimes. Come on, if my kid were as talented as you, I'd wear a sign or something. Mother of Brittany Taylor. She's got her own life, and so does my dad. I've got mine, so we'll keep it. They both work? We're all just busy people, that's just the way it is. Well, my mom says we have to make time to be together. My mom doesn't say that, okay? Sorry. Don't be sorry. No, I mean, I'm sorry for saying that, not for... I know what you mean. They never come to see you? Ever? Hello, Mr. Stage Manager! Hey, that light wasn't on before. Maybe he's back. With a finished script! Let's line up. Maybe that's a part for all. That's not how it works. It might this time. Maybe this time will be different. For all of us. You want to go first? You can. Can we go together? We're ready. I finished, Abella. I put your things in the suitcase. It's not too heavy, see? The little china dog, I wrapped it in a newspaper so it won't break. You can put it on the shelf by the window in your new room. Nursing homes has windows? Sure they do. You can look out. Remember how you used to show me pictures in the clouds of cats and dogs and... Don't you remember? Abuela? Abuela, it's me, Sally, Sally Seuss, in a crack and crackaroo. Don't you remember me? 
Vamanos, Abuela. That's waiting. struggle in this area, more than you realize, really negative, like little enemies whispering to us, telling us stuff that's not good, stuff we can't do, telling us we're not good enough, smart enough, capable enough. My mom calls it our, our little mental chatterbox. My dad calls those thoughts, the monsters in his head, best description I have ever heard. I think we all have them too, negative little chatterboxes. Like little voices whispering to us, putting us down. Those thoughts, those monsters, must be tame, my friends. They create stories for us. Stories most of us believe without ever questioning them, without ever challenging them. I think the saddest thing in the world is that so many people listen to those stupid little chatterboxes. That's why they give up, that's why people give up too soon, too early, right before they reach the finish line. That's why people quit persuading their goals and dreams in life. But the good news is that like the monsters in every story, every fairy tale, every video game, they lose. They lose and we win. The monsters always lose. The best way to tame the monsters in your own head is to, be, is to become the hero of your own story. The knight is shining armor coming to your own rescue. The cavalry leading the charge to save the day. The be I want to encourage you to transform yourself. Become the hero of your own story today. Be your own unbeatable warrior. You are the great. You are the world's greatest living expert upon on you. Nobody knows better than you what you want and what will make you happy. No one is more capable than you of taming the monsters, slaying the dragon, and silencing that ugly little chatterbox box inside your own head. Hey, pay us a dollar. Hey, 
and two dogs and they take the step away. What do you think it is? I don't know. Goober's a cookie company. I thought we'd be tasting cookies. Well, this is not Looks like dog food. It smells like it too. Maybe if we took a tiny itty bitty bite, then we could actually fill out this questionnaire and leave. Okay, but you have to go first. Well. I just can't. Well, if you're not, I'm not. Let's just write down that it's unbelievable. That wouldn't be a lie. But how do you bring it? Excellent, good, fair, or poor? We can't lie. They pay us money. Okay, so please get it. You, you. exactly how long a day is and when it's going to end. But when you broke my heart, I definitely did not see that coming. And it's hard to take the weather personally. Whereas you tore my heart into little pieces and then jumped up and down on those little pieces, which is something the weather would never do. So I guess maybe love is just love. Whereas you, Trent, are just a jerk. Thank you. <laughs>